Have you ever wondered who you really are? Are you a mere collection of thoughts, feelings, and experiences? Or is there something more to your identity? These questions might lead us to a concept that's been explored extensively in psychology, philosophy, and spirituality, the ego. This term refers to our sense of self, the I, or me, that we perceive ourselves to be. Think of the ego as an intricate tapestry, woven from threads of thoughts, feelings, and self-concepts. It's the narrative we tell ourselves about who we are, what we believe, what we value, and how we relate to the world. Our ego shapes our interactions, our decisions, and ultimately, our reality. It's a crucial part of our identity, but is it all there is to us? So, if we peel back the layers of our identity, are we left with the ego, or is there more to discover? Let's delve deeper into the concept of ego from different perspectives. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, divided our identity into three components, the ID, the ego, and the superego. This model of the psyche, this tripartite structure, is an elegant way of understanding the complexities of human behavior. Imagine the psyche as a three-layered cake. At the base we have the ID, raw and unfiltered. It's the part of us that is purely instinctual, driven by desires and needs, seeking immediate gratification without considering morality or reality. We could say it's the part of us that wants what it wants, and it wants it now. On top of the ID we have the ego, it's the layer that interacts with the world around us, it's the part of us that plans, makes decisions and most importantly, mediates between the raw desires of the ID and the moral guidelines of the superego. The ego is the voice of reason, ensuring that our desires align with the reality of the world and the codes of conduct we've internalized. The ego then has a challenging job. It's like a tightrope walker, balancing the demands of the ID and the superego. On one side it has the ID pushing for instant gratification, and on the other side it has the superego, laying down the law of what's right and what's wrong. The ego is the part that allows us to navigate the world without falling into the extremes of hedonism or moral rigidity. And then we have the superego perched at the top. It's the part of us that holds our moral compass, the internalized societal ideals. It's the voice of should and should not the part of us that sets limits on the ID's impulses and teaches morality. So, in Freud's view, the ego is the rational part of our identity, ensuring our desires align with reality and morality. But is this the only interpretation of the ego? Stay tuned as we delve into the ego from philosophical and spiritual perspectives in the next scenes. Philosophers have long grappled with the concept of the ego, offering a myriad of interpretations. The ego's essence has been a subject of debate across various philosophical traditions. Western philosophy, with its roots in Greek thought, often places the ego front and center. It is seen as the nucleus of personal identity, the I that experiences, thinks and interacts with the world. This perspective highlights the individual's unique sense of self, asserting the ego's crucial role in understanding and navigating our reality. On the other hand, Eastern philosophy sometimes paints a different picture. In many Asian traditions, the ego is seen as less significant, sometimes even an illusion. The emphasis is often on collective identity or unity, transcending the individual ego to reach a state of interconnectedness and harmony with all beings. While philosophy offers a rich tapestry of interpretations, it's clear that the ego plays a central role in our understanding of ourselves. In the spiritual context, the ego takes a different form. It's often seen as a barrier to higher levels of consciousness. Here, the ego is regarded as the part of our identity that tightly clings to the physical world. It's a construct that carries our sense of self, along with our dreams, desires, and emotions. This is why the ego in a spiritual context is often associated with our physical bodies and the material realm. Imagine your ego as a suitcase. It's packed with personal aspirations, material possessions, and all the things we identify ourselves with. Now, these things aren't inherently bad. However, they are temporary and fleeting, just like our physical existence in this world. And when we identify ourselves too closely with the transient, we may lose sight of the deeper meanings of life and our spiritual connection. So, why does spirituality often focus on transcending the ego? It's because the ego can act as a veil, clouding our ability to perceive the world beyond our individual perspectives. This veil can hinder our spiritual development, keeping us entangled in our desires and attachments. In this sense, the ego is seen as something we need to overcome, to free ourselves from, in order to attain higher levels of consciousness. 
Various spiritual traditions and teachers propose different methods to surrender the ego or detach from its influence. Some of these methods involve spiritual practices such as mindfulness, meditation, and self-inquiry. These practices aim to help us understand the nature of the ego and to become freer from its grip. They guide us to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment, allowing us to see that we are not our thoughts, we are not our emotions, and we are not our ego. Whether it's a mediator between our desires and morality, a philosophical construct or a spiritual hurdle to overcome, the ego undeniably plays a pivotal role in our lives. So what have we learned about the ego? It's clear that this small word carries immense weight and complexity. In the realm of psychology, the ego is our rational self, the intermediary between raw desire and moral conduct, the manager of the ID and superego. It's the part of us that makes calculated decisions based on reality and the moral compass. Philosophy often explores the ego as a concept of self, a perception of identity that can shift and change, a construct of our thoughts, emotions, and experiences. Spirituality, on the other hand, sees the ego as a barrier to higher consciousness, a tether to the material world that keeps us from realizing our true spiritual nature. It's the part of us that clings to temporary fleeting things, obscuring the profound and eternal. Whether we choose to embrace our ego, transcend it or mediate it, understanding the ego is a critical step in our journey of self-discovery. Remember, who we are is not just about the ego but how we choose to navigate it.